you've seen this boat before, I went down and I wound up sanding this limb to even it off. And currently, I'm sitting on the couch with it, enjoying it, the whole aura, the whole scene, man. After being outside and, and shooting arrows with it, arrow, over and over and over and over again. Torture testing it just to see if this repair is holding up and I see no issues with it. This is proven to be a good way to fix a delaminating limb with Gorilla Glue and also you have to you find some way to compress it so the foam doesn't foam up it goes in and stays strong in the surface I'm really digging this Massey finish too although I didn't do it correctly you do mix it down apparently four to one so it is like water and then you, you wipe it on let it cure I guess maybe not all the way so it can bond layer to layer to layer five or six times and apparently the story goes, as researched by our, our researcher, Hugh, thank you, Hugh, appreciate that, that Jay Massey actually in Alaska dropped his bow into a river and then found it some days later and the bow was fine, a sinew backed Osage orange bow. So that is a testament to the Massey finish. So I am a fan for rotten weather um, bow use using a massy finish. It, it's worth investigating. It's worth investigating. And so this short bow, look out, it's the limbs are whisper thin. Red oak, which goes well because red oak is a local wood. I would like to, I would like to get some Pacific U and do a, actual reproduction, you know, of a West Coast bow using the exact same wood. But I appreciate red oak. And why do I do that? Because red oak is a local wood. This was a Michigan tree. This wood came from a Michigan tree. And the leg tendons that I used and backstrap tendons is a probably a superior sinew to leg tendons for sinew-backed bows. The horn bows, which are even more stressed. Sinew on the back, horn on the belly would use back straps in you because it's longer, less junctions. I don't use it because of cost. It's cheaper to use leg tenants and it works for my purposes. And so white-tailed deer, these came from Arkansas, Mike Yancey at Pine Holler Longbows, but we have white-tailed deer and I can prove it. And so local made. So what do I use for a quiver? Now it is true that the emerald ash board that arrived in Detroit in the early 2000s that devastated white ash and black ash and pumpkin ash in some spots in Canada completely ended the native black ash basket industry and others that engaged in that activity. I for one engaged in that activity not to an extreme degree but I would along with my trusted employee of many years Keith, Keith Hammond. I don't know if the Keith Meister watches this great guy great guy we were like han solo and chewbacca and chewbacca is actually an alien form of sasquatch but that is another story um we'd gather black ash trees here when we had them they're all dead now and then scrape the bark off after cutting them to length and then you beat on them with a club because you have to uh, loosen up the, the layers and you get to start with a knife and you peel up strips of black ash it separates along growth rings and then within growth rings you can split it I have some stockpiled I, I still have black ash strips and I've been saving them for special projects and so this morning's special project was hang on to your shorts sports fans you are about to be bedazzled oh yeah a quiver for my bow set. Look at that. And I am nowhere near a master at basket making. However, I am a clever enough person to come up with ways, tricks to compensate for my lack of experience. And so, what I did, I began. John begot a cardboard form. I have cardboard boxes in the garage. I cut one up and then rolled it into a tapered tube. It's a little smaller here than it is here, slightly. Um, tape and then cut circles out of cardboard and then 
oriented them so the top circle is 90 degrees off in direction, they have grain, from the other one, taped them together, and jammed them into that tube. Retained stiffness. Then I took my black ash strips and I soaked them in hot water because they've been sitting around for years and eons and epochs. Soak them, rejuvenate them in hot water. And I started it, it has four full size spokes. I mean, up, over, and down, four, quattro. And then another single because they have to have an odd number to get that perfect weave without having to do some fancy skipping. So just jointed it there and then cut a thin strip or two, thin, not talking narrow, I'm talking thin because it has to do some edge bending, thin strips, cut them narrow after soaking them, and then did that bottom on the top. And to keep all this stuff tidy, I have to use a form because if I did it freehand it would be all sorts of wonky. Rubber bands around those strips keeping them down. Once I began with a tapered one along here, actually small and big, because it's a spiral going down. It's not just a ring, and then another ring, another ring. Once I got that started, I could take the tape off, or the rubber bands off, and use thicker strips, maintain integrity here, and just shh. Now on the end, the spokes will come up, and people that know what they're doing will then take those spokes and then bend them down and feed them through. I did not do that. Sam I am. I will not eat your grating eggs and ham. I just cut it off. After weaving a couple more layers just along that top rim. Now it looks like I did just bend them, but all I needed to do just as I'm feeding new ones in when I run out, then I'll slide it underneath there over the top of the previous one and then continue on. I cut strips and just jammed them over and then back through. So these are separate thinner strips than the spokes. I used majestically stiff strips of black ash for the spokes to maintain integrity. But the ones that go over the top that are fed through, and you notice there's, they all go over. I didn't do anything, they just all, all go over. They're just jammed through there, over the top, and then fed down through. And so there it is. How did I get that cardboard form out of it? Because you're not just going to pull it out because I put the strips on tightly. When I did my final soaking in this thing that we refer to as a bathtub, the tub of baths in hot water, soaked it, and that helps just kind of oh, relax everything and just make it happy to be in this final form. That cardboard got all floppy, so I was able to reach my paw in there and twist it and then yanked it out. Yanked it out like a man. <clears throat> Give me your war face, private. And now it's just a question of drying. Nice. As far as the, the strap, deer hide, buckskin, raw hide, if you... You can take raw hide and, and prepare it in a way so it doesn't get hard and shrink when it gets wet and dries. Again, use cleverness. Now what will I do with this as far as finishing it? I don't know. It doesn't need to be finished, but I bet this thing would gleam in for a penny, in for a dollar. I'm an Americana, not English. We don't use pounds for currency here. Dollars, in for a penny, in for a pound. It's a money reference. Um, because I used artificial finish on this thing. I mean, Helmsman Spar Urethane varnish on the back and then soon to be on both limbs, the Massey finish. I, I think that I might put Helmsman Spar Urethane on this when it, it, uh, it water dries off of it. And it's really gonna make the darker strips, the heartwood strips, which there's a band of dark and dark up here dark spokes some of them is really going to look awesome and there it is if you don't have black ash you can go to a craft store and buy um, similar kind of strips whether i don't know what they're made out of they're not made out of this um but it, it's a really easy thing to do it is absolutely real easy 
provided you do make a cardboard form. If I used, I made one with a log one time, tapered it, smoothed it out, used that log form, and it's like, ugh, I had to take the thing apart to get it off and then redo it because it was stuck onto that log like nobody's business, even though there was a slight taper on it. Cardboard form makes all the difference in the world. Now it's on to arrows. You know what that means? I am going to have to learn how to make stone stone points. I'm going to have to. That's part of it. If we want to be complete human beings, we need to use our hands to create tools from basic stuff and it doesn't get much more basic than stone. I have been slacking. I have gone 59 years on this earth without becoming a decent stone point maker. I disappoint myself, but on the positive side, it gives me something to look forward to every morning. When you go to bed, you need to be able to look forward to something the next morning. It helps your sleep. Sleep is part of health. Along with stop drinking that pop. Get rid of the Mountain Dew, Coca-Cola. I'm not saying go full throttle with a new diet right away, but I bet you if you just stop drinking sugary soft drinks and even artificial stuff created in laboratories, not fit for human consumption, do that for a couple weeks, maybe a month, you're going to see a difference and then you're going to go full throttle and stop eating wheat and corn and soybeans and all that other stuff. That is all. Sorry to preach. Actually, no, I'm not. 